The arts, music and conversation. The Dominic King Show on BBC Radio Kent. All this week on the show, we're hearing from five new writers who've emerged as a result of lockdown. On Monday, we heard from Karen Stanley, an established writer from Whitstable, who's been coaching five new writers as part of her Writer Passage Growth Academy. It's been amazing. And, you know, I, I hope I've taught them a lot, but I've learned a lot as well, which has been incredible. And within the group, we've got two novelists, two children's writers and uh, one non-fiction writer and a partridge in a pear tree. But, you know, it's been it's been the variety and, you know, the basic skills of writing are can be quite uniform across the genres. You know, good writing is good writing. So having all of those different inputs and those different viewpoints and those different genres has been, yeah, it's been incredible. Last night, Fiona Schultz from Upchurch and Bev Bunn from Chatham told me about their books for children, Croc Takes, and uh, when Harvey met Chester, a uh, croc tails rather. Um, do you know, tonight we're going to meet uh, Jackie Sampson from Bexley and Jane Carson joining us from Dublin this evening, which is brilliant. So good to have you both with us. Hello. Hi, Dom. Hi, Dom. Really lovely to see you both. I can see you here on the screen. And uh, for many people, I think hearing the inspirational stories already this week, and I, uh, I think everyone has agreed that the passion that's come from Karen Stanley, Jackie, has just been phenomenal. Was she like that when you were all working together? She is just like that all of the time. I think she's just a, a, an incredibly passionate person, um, especially about her writing, but just generally she, she's such a, a kind and giving person as well. And she just has this phenomenal energy about her. Um, but all the way through, she, she's constant. It's, it's, she's just um, a font of wonderful ideas, you know, steering us as well. She's just, um, she's been awesome, amazing. And Jane, joining us from Dublin, but I believe many connections uh, to Kent. That's right, Dom. I'm originally um, from Mepham and uh, I went to school with Bev uh, from the age of 11 um, and reconnected with her about five years ago. Um, and she actually introduced me to Karen because Karen was running a mindfulness writing program back in March. So I was a bit later to the academy than the other girls. But I did this week of mindfulness writing and I thought, oh my goodness, I just love this. And I love the ladies involved. So I, I twisted Karen's arm to let me get involved in the academy. And I've loved every minute of it. She's brilliant. What I love is how you've all become really close because of this writing experience. And that's what the arts is all about, isn't it? Bringing people together. And I guess, Jane, that's been a kind of real glue to get you all through the understanding of what you're trying to write and get on to the page from your head. Absolutely. Um, we were all coming from quite different places with our stories. And um, I, I just found it brilliant because I suppose everyone hits roadblocks at times about these things, but we've all been there to, um, I suppose, try and find solutions and just offer suggestions, even if it is you know, you'll work it out, not actually coming up with the answer, but just being this kind of force of nature behind each other. Talking of behind, I can see some lovely images uh, of your own artwork because you are a, a botanic artist and, and that must be lovely to have that as part of your life. It's fabulous, Dom. I didn't start painting until I was 40, so I'm a lot older than that now. <laughs> and... Uh, I, uh, I started painting these botanics about uh, six years ago. So all of my stuff is based on the language of flowers. And uh, I, I love that. So I suppose there was a latent creativity there that just converted into the written word rather than my paintbrushes. You were all coming from such different backgrounds as well. Jackie, for you, you're an administrator for King's College London, uh, but also another part of your world is being a, a movement and energy coach. So. Uh, the fact that you all come with such different backgrounds, do you think that's helped you in your writing too? Absolutely. I mean, we, we all bring that something different to the party because as as the group, um, when we're, as we were in the group developing our stories and that, we, we all had those extra elements to bring into it if, if one of us was stuck or... Um, or, or just in the planning stages and and yeah giving all that putting all those different ideas into the pot gave us that something extra 
to help us move along. Let's start tonight with your story, Jackie. I am Agnes. Uh, a chance for us on the air to hear uh, some of the text that you have recorded for us. But can you just give us a sense of this story first of all, uh, and I am Agnes, and, and, and where it began in your mind? Um, so I am Agnes, it is about a young woman's journey from um, a space of um, quite a dark place um, and uh, kind of she's very depressed um, but into a more um, light and a lightness of being herself kind of it's a, it's a spiritual journey really uh, a spiritual awakening and um, there's, there's undertones of mental health all the way through it as well and that's always been a big thing for me um, throughout my life as well so and it's something that I'm quite passionate about. So was it cathartic um, writing it? Absolutely um, and I think writing is, um, well, art for any art form is can be quite um, therapeutic, cathartic um, and, and yes, it was for me. I mean, it's my first book, so and I think um, for a lot of people, when you, when you write something, it can be that way. Um, so yes, yeah. Jackie Sampson from Bexley. I am Agnes. My skin prickled with exposure to the cold air creeping in through the tiny gap at the bottom of my window, filtering through into the dull emptiness that surrounded me. I wondered if I could make it through another day but I hadn't managed to step off the precipice and now no sleep taunted me like a bully. My clock fuzzily shouted 3 a.m. in all its redness. I took a long breath. As I exhaled, tendrils of warm air filled the space in front of me. I did it again, watching them float away towards the wall. I could see the branches of the tree on the wall waving this way and that, and I stared, becoming lost in the simplicity of its lines, watching it move gently a fluttering disrupted the pattern. A fluttering? No birds are awake at night time. A bat, maybe. I'd never seen a bat before in real life and waited to see if it swung upside down somewhere on a branch. A small smile creeping in at the illusion. I felt myself drifting into this. I am Agnes, the story of a woman lost in a dark place and her journey from darkness into the light with a little help from her guardian angel. Really lovely to hear that. And I was sitting there listening this morning in my home studio and uh, I was I wanted to read more. That's the point, of course. But uh, just may be very strange to hear that out loud, too. Yeah, it, it is, actually. Um, I mean, actually, that was one of the things in the group that it was it is very difficult initially to share, um, especially in the in the early stages and just ripping that plaster off and, and, and having the constructive feedback, which was so great in the group. Um, but because I've heard it a few more times now, it, it, that you made it sound wonderful with the backing music. Awesome. Thank you so much. Jane Carson, the Cactus Growers Club. What you all have, Jane, is a, a, a real sense of place. And with this piece we're going to hear from you, we, you know, I, I am absolutely transported with you. A story of unexpected friendships and the power of community, especially during a global pandemic. Um, writing this and just getting that sense of... Uh, particularly this part we're about to hear, just take us into this world because we, 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 you take me onto that car ferry. I can feel every bit, I can smell every moment. Well, my, my main character, she's um, a, a bit like Jackie, really. She's going on a journey. She's going on a personal journey and a physical journey. Um, she's leaving a life in England. She's traveling to Dublin to establish herself in a new place, in a new job, and um, this is the point at which she's, I suppose, not really severing ties, but she wants to create this new chapter in her life. And um, little does she know that COVID's on its way. But uh, Autobiographical? <laughs> well, I, I suppose there's resonance there with the fact I, I moved to Dublin 25 years ago. And um, I, I guess, I mean, it's always been brilliant move for me to be honest with you Dom and I love it here and have been very blessed with friends but there is that change in life you know a different a different location but sure you could be moving to a different town anywhere and still face these issues you know. Jane Carson formerly from Kent now in Dublin the Cactus Growers Club. My friend Paula had given me a set of affirmation cards recently they were a going away present and I am throwing myself on their mercy 
to convince myself that I am completely in control of my life. I need something to allay my growing sense of panic as I am sitting on the Irish ferries WB Yates from Holyhead to Dublin Port. A poetic name for this carrier of crowds, conveyors and commodities. The car deck had been palpably thick with the whiff of diesel and car fumes. But climbing the passenger stairwell had brought a more perfumed aroma of furniture polish along with a faint alluring scent of coffee and what smelt like the frazzle of an all-day breakfast from the buffet. Finally, arriving at the main doors, I had felt a welcome glare of natural daylight, like a miner returning to the surface. I absolutely love hearing your stories and it, and it's so fantastic to think that this all happened, you know, from an idea in October uh, 2020 that emerged from Karen Stanley and has grown into you all having your books published later this week, November the 27th, an author event at a bookshop in Rochester and then a big party at the Dragon co-working space in Chatham on December the 3rd. Are you able to get over, Jane, for that? Unfortunately, I'm not done and I am gutted about that. Um, I had hoped to be able to travel over, but um, just circumstances at the moment make it very tricky. Well, so, I, I know um, that I know that the, the, the rest of the girls I've been speaking to so far this week will be drinking for you. So don't worry on that account. Um, I believe that's the case. <laughs> I, I've already been told, <laughs> um, mainly by Karen. Uh, Karen will be joining us, by the way, uh, tomorrow night with, as we hear from our, our final author, here on the programme as well as we complete our week together on the Dominic King Show. But uh, what a joy tonight to speak to uh, Jane Carson and Jackie Sampson. To you both, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate you spending some time and thank you for the writing. We look forward to hearing what happens next, dot, dot, dot. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. And Jane, all the best to you there in Dublin. Thanks, Dom. Thanks for having me. On BBC Radio Kent, coming up next... Casey Dale. This